the tunnel. One autumn evening, Derek was waiting in Wellsworth Yard when James arrived with some trucks. As usual, he was in a bit of a foul mood. Good evening, James, smiled Derek. <laughs> What's so good about it? These trucks have been a bother all the way here. Well, said Derek proudly, the fat controller's given me a special job. He wants me to take an important goods train to the other railway. Oh, isn't that exciting? James was about to retort when a half-forgotten memory struck him. You'll be going through Henry's tunnel, won't you? asked James. Yes, answered Derek. Why? James glanced around. After Henry was let out of the tunnel, an engine known as 87546 broke down in Henry's bore. The guard went to get help, but when he came back, 87546 and his train had disappeared. Disappeared? asked Derek. Surely he just went out the other side. That's what the guard thought, said James. But no one saw 87546 exit the tunnel. To this day, no one has ever found him or the passengers who were on his train. Derek was stunned. But how? he asked. Engines can't just disappear into thin air. No one knows, said James. Some say he went back in time. Others say he did leave and no one saw him. And some say it was a hungry monster. He paused. But between you and me, I think the tunnel missed Henry's company and now wants to find another engine to take his place. Just try and make sure it isn't you. Derek gulped. Just then, the guard blew his whistle and still shivering, he rolled away. Derek was making good time and soon reached the workstation without any trouble. But he couldn't help thinking about James's story. A tunnel can't just come to life, he told himself. It's just not possible. James was just pulling your coupling. But Derek's tone soon changed when he approached Henry's tunnel. Its large mouth seemed to swallow the rails and no light shone from the other side. It looked like a gateway into nothing. Derek suddenly felt very scared. He revved his engine and charged into the tunnel at full speed. The signalman climbed the telegraph pole. The station master paced the platform and the fat controller checked his watch. Mm. Fifteen minutes late, he muttered. Just then the telephone rang and the station master hurried away to answer it. He came out looking worried. Derek never made it past the work station, he said. No one's seen him since or knows where he's got to. The fat controller was now very concerned. He quickly organised a rescue party and soon Bear and a group of workmen were heading down the line in search of Derek. Derek had broken down inside Henry's tunnel. He felt dreadfully frightened and jumped at even the slightest sound. Just then he heard a loud growling sound. It bounced off the tunnel walls and made the rails quaver. Then a light appeared in the distance, growing larger by the second. <laughs> it's the monster! cried Derek and shut his eyes. Derek? Are you all right? Derek cautiously opened one eye. It was bare. Oh, oh thank goodness! He sighed. Let's get out of here, please. Bear was quickly coupled up and the two diesels set off for the other railway. Derek was happy to be out of the tunnel, but still felt a bit shaky. Is everything all right, Derek? 
asked the Fat Controller. Derek recounted James's story. The Fat Controller smiled. Oh, oh, don't believe everything you hear, Derek. That story is nothing more than an old urban legend. The truth is that... Just then, the yard foreman called out. Oi! You're a few short! What do you mean? I left with a fault. Derek cut short. His train was indeed missing its last few vans. How? He cried. I never stopped to uncouple any. Unless... No one said a word.